So a lot of people have been asking me what my programming workflow kind of looks like. So that's what I'll be sharing with you today. Let's go. Okay, so that was a really random intro and I hope you enjoyed it. But anyway, I've been watching a lot of these videos lately where people go through their different workflows for whatever thing it may be, whether it's editing video or writing a book or whatever. And I've been really enjoying them. So I figured that there's probably a decent chance that you'll enjoy watching this as well. So let's get straight into it. This is what my process generally looks like. We basically have two main parts and that is research and then the actual coding part. And I usually start out with some sort of idea for something that I think could be cool to implement for a video for this channel. I generally don't have a clue of how to do that particular thing, which means that I'll have to start with actually researching it. It's really important to get this step right and to really spend some time researching the idea first because what will tend to happen is that if I don't research it enough, I'll end up choosing a way of doing something that's very like slow or like kind of a bad way of actually doing it. And that will usually cause it to take either way longer than it should take or just be way more difficult than it should be. So this is something that I really wanna emphasize that you really need to spend time researching the idea before you start. So the first thing that I'll usually do is I'll create a Google document where I'll basically just write down different questions that I might have or just links to different articles that I'm reading. So basically creating a uh, directory of different links and resources to different things. At this stage, what I'm doing is I'm trying to get a basic understanding of the topic at hand, just trying to kind of grasp the surface topic, uh, if you will, trying to understand how it works, what is needed for it, just a surface level overview of what this takes, if it's possible for me to actually do this. And then once I've done that, I'll try to acquire some specific knowledge about that area. So what what kind of things do I actually need to be able to perform this? And how is it actually done? What is the best way to do it? Has anyone else done it before? Based on those answers, I will try to figure out the way that I think is gonna be the best way to approach the task at hand, if you will. Usually what will end up happening is I'll find either a repository of someone else that has done something similar or an article on the topic that goes really into depth on how to do the specific thing that I'm doing. And if I'm unlucky and the thing that I'm trying to do is something that not, there's no articles that I can find or no repositories that I can find on it, then what I'll do is I'll have to figure out something that someone has done that's very similar to the thing that I'm trying to do. That's also something that goes really well with the research part of the project. And that's basically trying to figure out if it's something that no one else has done or that I can't really find anyone else that has done, then I want to find as many, like I want to try to break down the problem into the different things that I think I'll need. For each of those things, I'll try to figure out how to do each specific thing. Usually what will end up happening is that there will be articles on each specific thing that I want to do, but there won't be an article on how to combine all the different things. So most of the time when I actually then end up coding it out, will be spent on trying to combine those different things. Once you actually start the coding, you should be at the stage where you can just start writing things out and you don't have to think too much about the thing that you're actually having to do because that should be done in the research part. So that's essentially what the research part looks like. And then we have the second part to it, which is actually writing the code or starting the project. Here, the, the first step is something that kind of it overlaps between research and actually writing the code, and that's creating the requirements. So basically figuring out the list of requirements that I'll need for the project. If you watched any of my live uh, coding sessions, this is something that I'll usually start with, is figuring out what I need to be doing for that specific task. One of the main reasons why you want to create a really detailed and thorough list of requirements is so that you can then more easily maintain a high level of abstraction in your code. And that's a lot of really fancy words, but essentially abstraction or a high level of abstraction in your code just means that you don't repeat yourself in your code and basically create a clean piece of code that's as efficient as possible. So let's say that you have a game that you're creating and you wanna have flowers in that game. 
and let's say that you want to have a sunflower and a lily. A problem could be that you'll end up writing a class for a sunflower and then a separate class for a lily when in fact they all maintain the same things. Let's say that they have the color of the flower, the name of the flower, and then photosynthesis that they do. I don't know, it's really difficult to say pho photosynthesis. Let's say that that's all that they need to be doing. Then you essentially don't need two classes for the separate flowers. You basically can get away with just one class called flower and then you can have the different things in that class that's gonna be needed for the flowers because it's gonna be the same for all the different flowers if that's the case in your game. And essentially that's what you wanna achieve with your code. You wanna avoid the places where you might end up writing several different classes for a flower when you could just get away with one class called flower. I don't know if that makes any sense. It's quite difficult to explain, but that's essentially what a high level of abstraction means. It means that the code doesn't repeat itself unnecessarily. That's why you want to be really thorough when you write out your requirements because if you write out the requirements for the sunflower and the lily, then you'll be able to see that, okay, they're gonna have the exact same requirements. That means that I don't need to write separate classes for each. I can just write one class for both of them. And that's essentially something that's gonna save you a lot of time when you're actually writing the code. And it's gonna make it a lot easier once you're actually at the state of writing the code because you'll just be able to read your requirements and just type everything out as you see it because you've already spent the time to think through all the different things that are required for the things that are gonna be in your project. So that's a really long spiel about why you should focus on requirements, but that's the first step I would say after you've done some research is to figure out the different requirements for your thing that you're, the project that you're about to start. And these requirements are gonna be very different depending on what type of project you're starting. And it's also probably gonna change throughout the process of actually starting the thing. And you're probably gonna add new requirements as you get further into the project. But it's something that's really important to try to do as thoroughly as possible at the start. And then accept the fact that you're gonna probably have to change it once you get started. The next thing that I'll do is more towards the actual writing of the code and that is to start a GitHub repository. And this is really useful for progress tracking and also for backtracking and also limiting screw ups or limiting the damage that a screw up can make. And it's also something that a lot of companies use when they write the, their software. So it's something that's really useful to be practicing on a daily basis, even if it's just for your own little project. And so that's something that I will start next. And one of the first things I'll do is I'll create a separate branch for whatever feature that I'm working on. Usually I'll name the branch something related to the requirement that I'm working on. So essentially the requirements will get interweaved into the repository on GitHub as well, so that each requirement that I'm working on will be a separate branch. And then once that requirement has been completed and tested, I will then merge that into the master branch. And these are some technical terms that maybe you don't understand if you're not using GitHub or you're not used to using it, but that's usually how I will work if I do this properly. If I'm doing something really quick, then I'll usually not go through the trouble of actually creating different branches and all those sort of things. But if I'm doing something proper and something that's a little bit bigger, then this is how I will do it. So then once I've created the first branch, then I'll basically get to writing the code. And if you've done all the previous steps properly, then this should be the easiest part. This should just be basically taking off tasks on a to-do list fairly simply, unless it's things that you are very unfamiliar with how to do. This is where I limit myself, or I try at least as best as I can, to limit myself to working on just one requirement at a time. And this then again allows me to maintain a high level of abstraction because I'm only focused on one specific requirement at a time. It's gonna be easier to test that and easier to just make sure that that works and that doesn't break the entire code base. And then this is pretty much the process that I usually go through. And I wanna add in also that if it's something that I'm not used to doing that I don't know how to do and it's like the first time that I'm trying it. Then usually what I'll do is I'll spend a lot of time in the research part, but then I will go through this list of or this workflow and I'll go through it top to bottom several times during the process of trying to achieve the thing that I'm trying to do. Because usually what will end up happening is that I'll get some part of the way through the process and then there will be something that I don't know how to do and I'll have to go back into research and try to research that specific thing. 
and then create requirements for that specific thing because I didn't understand it to begin with. And then once I've got the requirements, I can then again start working on the code and actually writing it out. And this is something that usually it will be quite a tedious process and it's something that I struggle with a lot. I've tried at least in the past a lot to add in the failures or some of the errors that I run into and like to show the struggles of my process of actually building these things out so that it doesn't look like I'm just straight away building it without even thinking and it just works for me straight away because the usual truth is the actual opposite it takes me a long time to get these things to work it usually takes me an entire day to do these one day builds that i've done it may even take a little bit longer than that just because i run into errors that i don't know how to fix and i have to spend a lot of time just trying to figure out why the error is occurring and that's usually the beauty and the uh, struggle of coding it's just that you'll run into errors that you don't know how to fix and you'll have to spend a lot of time googling it and it'll seem like there's no actual answer to the question that you're looking for for whatever reason no one's run into that error before but what you'll find is usually at the end of the day you just misunderstood the error or there was something that you didn't do right once you understood it you could just google that and you found the answer straight away and it was actually pretty simple but that's the beauty and the struggle of coding, I think. And that's also one of the things that makes it really gratifying, if you will, when you actually complete one of those things, when you solve one of those errors, and also makes it kind of addictive, is that once you run into an error, you just want to try to solve that. And as soon as you do solve it, you feel really, really good about yourself because you, you're able to achieve that thing that you thought or you felt was completely impossible. But yeah, that's uh, essentially what my workflow looks like when I code things out. I'll maybe make a video in the future on the specific tools that I use for these different things. But most of the time, I you don't need any specific tool. I usually use just a regular web browser and Google to find the different answers that I need to the questions that I have and just a regular text editor to write the code that I'm writing. So there's really nothing super specific that goes into this process. It's mostly about the process itself and thinking through the things that you want to try to achieve. And that's something that you'll learn with time is the more time you spend preparing for the thing that you want to do, the better or the easier it will be and the more enjoyable it will be to actually do the thing that you're aiming to do. So I hope that this was somewhat interesting to find out what my process kind of looks like. I don't know what it'll turn out like because again, I didn't use any uh, actual script. I just used bullet points. So right now I cannot remember at all what I've been saying for the past two hours when I've been filming this video, but I hope it will turn out somewhat nice. And uh, yeah, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I'll see you in the next one.